I'm Craig Flynn. Uh, part of my bio that uh, John didn't read, I, I, um, I headed up the property tax limitation in Oregon because uh, a friend of mine who wasn't a friend yet, I just barely knew Don McIntyre, who passed away about a year ago, I think this month. He, um, he had worked several years on limiting property taxes and he promised me he'd do it one more time and we did and we actually passed the measure. Mm. And so my only claim to fame in that measure is I talked him into it and stuck him with a two-year job that he became infamous for or famous depending on what side you were on. Um, later, later on, um, I, I ran for Metro. I, 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 had, I, I had about 40% of the vote. I was an unknown. I had no money. And the reason I ran for Metro is a, f a friend of mine, Larry George, who was the head of the property rights group in Oregon, um, he called me up and asked me if I'd run, and I go, Larry, I'm not in the district. <coughs> and so he calls up again a, a few days later and goes, Craig, I really need you to run. And, and I go, Larry, don't you remember, I'm not in the district. And, and then he calls me up one more time, and he goes, Craig, they changed the boundaries. You know they're changing the boundaries. I go, I know, but I'm still not in the district. And, and, and I don't know if it was that call or the next one, I was kind of getting annoyed with the calls because I didn't want to run for Metro and, and, and I knew I wasn't in the district so I said something really stupid and you should always be careful to know what you're talking about when you say something like this. Larry, you know damn well I'd do it for you if I was in the district but I'm not. <laughs> well he calls up again and he goes, Craig, on the last readjustment of the boundary you're in the district. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm running for Metro, we raise a little bit of money. And, you know, like I said, it was a 60-40 vote, and um, my Libertarians friends thought I did really well, but I got creamed at 60-40, but I was an unknown, spent hardly any money, and Rod Park didn't uh, get a run unopposed, and, and I, I guess I guess there's good things and bad things about it. Every mayor came out against me. Uh, when, when I went around and, and talked about things, all I talked about, you know, since, you know, I, I probably didn't have a chance to win anyway, so I would just talk about just simple things like, we need more road capacity. If you're going to change zoning in an area, it should be up to the property owners and the people in that neighborhood. And, and people like that, and that, that's pretty much what I wrote in my voter pamphlet. And, and so I'm, I'm not going to say, because I'm going to talk about the Klakistani Rebellion, I'm not going to say I was the catalyst for it, but, but I, there definitely, definitely was, it was a kind of a, 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 a little shot there of what people were thinking, and, and there are a lot of people that don't like what's going on with the metro mandates and, and their zoning changes. The clarification, when you say metro, are, are you talking about the metro tri-county regional commission? Yes, the, yes, when I say metro, I'm talking about, I'm not talking about transit, I'm talking about the metro government that oversees planning, transit, transportation into Portland, in the Portland, Clackamas County, Washington County, Multnomah County area. And those are elected how often? Oh, geez. Was it every every four years? Four, yeah, every Staggered four years. terms. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and 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 and, and, they, and they had to redo the boundary because you got to have about they got to divide it up equally and right. and for some reason the population changed and got me in trouble. And they're paying jobs. They yeah. do get a, a substantial stipend. A part time, part time paying job, so you don't have to be there all the time to get paid. Probably w wouldn't have been bad money, but oh boy, it would have been miserable. I'm glad. I mean, in a way, I'm glad I lost. I think I won by losing. <laughs> but um, so I'm going to talk about the Clackamas Rebellion and. Um, and I'll first start out in Damascus. City of Damascus was when when he had that map up there. There's a there was a little green spot on the bottom right hand side of it, and and that's Damascus. It, it was sucked into the urban growth boundary a few years ago, and and during that time they have meetings. They have all these meetings where you come in, they sit you around in tables, and they give you rounded over uh, scissors so you don't hurt anyone in crayons, and then you draw on the maps on on what you'd like you know, the area to be. And it really doesn't matter what you say or what you want because they have facilitators at the table and they're trying to guide you into where you're supposed to go. And so they probably had several meetings like that out in Damascus because my friend Dan Fagley, who I'll get into in a few minutes, uh, that th they would go to these meetings and because I was involved in the Gateway, which he's talking about Russellville, I went to all those meetings with the rounded over scissors and the crayons and stuff and, and they never allowed us to really ask for what we want. That's, you know, John would go to those meetings and I got kind of fiery, and John would sit back and laugh. And, but, but um, so we don't know exactly what you're talking about here, huh? We, we don't know, know really what you're. What you're well, talking. what I'm talking about is what led up to the Damascus uh, rebellion. It, I is, know what he's so you have meeting after meeting, and, and they try to ask you how you want your neighborhood. Yeah, no, I understand that. It's in, a, little, a little bit in the weeds there. That's yeah. What I'm well, <coughs> well, I was jumping out of the weeds okay. just because I, I, I figured you'd need to know that they had these meetings anyway. 
uh, it came to a point where Damascus decided that they were going to form a city uh, because they didn't like what Metro was, was coming down with and they wanted to protect themselves. Uh, not, not everybody that got on the council was, was uh, opposed to everything that they were doing and so pretty soon the Damascus City Council started passing uh, taxes and, and, and other re regulations and they were coming up with this comp plan. Uh, to, to decide how to take this rural area, which which what which would John call it, a basically a big cow pasture, because you're you're talking about there were some areas where you had single family homes, one acre lots, five acre, twenty acre, and farmland, and 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 Metro had been pushing for years, dumping a lot of money in here, pushing these meetings to try to get the area rezoned into a city. Well, my friend Dan Fagley, who lived out there, in in this area that's now become the city, he moved out there because. He, he wanted to live on a, a, you know, his five acre farm or, or what he, I know he has a few acres. And so did a lot of the other people out there. A lot of people out there didn't see eye to eye with what Metro had planned for them. Metro looked at it like that blank slate. This is, this is a perfect area. We can do all these things that we've been planning to do. But the problem is Metro's dreams of what this area should be weren't what a lot of the people that lived in uh, Damascus and the Clackamas counties had in mind. And, and, so, and so Dan Fagley, and I'll get back to the, uh, the property tax uh, uh, part because me and Dan Fagley and Don McIntyre were all friends from Measure 5 and, and Don and Dan got together and they started writing some petitions. Uh, and they, st they came up with petitions like they had tax limitation and they put it on the ballot and it passed for the city of Damascus, like 70% of the vote. Uh, they, they, they passed uh, another measure that, that uh, said that if, if you're going to uh, uh, put a comp plan out and decide what the zoning is going to be, you have to give it back to the voters and they have to okay it because they did not like what was happening. You know, there's a lot of people that like the new plan because their farmland was being turned into a high valuable, high density, and they were going to make a lot of money. But other people's properties were going to be turned into green space. There's not a lot of money in green space and you can't do much with it. And so, and so some people, of course, were happy with the old plan, but, but the problem is they weren't asking the property owners what they really wanted. And so a lot of people in the Damascus, in the Clackamas area, did not like what was coming in. And in fact, I think they were even talking about light rail coming into this area. I mean, this rural area, light rail coming into this town, uh, all sorts of uh, all sorts of crazy ideas. But but most of these people, of course, like I said earlier, moved out there because that's not what they were looking for. Uh, so they, they come up with these. Uh, Limit property. I mean, it's property tax. I mean, every. I think every measure they passed was like a seventy percent vote. I mean, they were just killing uh, what Metro had planned, and the, and the city councilors and the, and the mayor had planned. So, that, so eventually, they 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 elected a mayor that was on their side that was opposed to the plan. Uh, they, they got like uh, two city councilors now. Are they in the majority now? I don't even know. Yeah, if, if they're not in the majority, they're close to it. But but because of what was coming down, they they've elected city officials that, that are fighting, they, they even, uh, I think they even had a measure to opt out of Metro, to pull the whole city out of Metro. Now, now this has caused quite an uproar in the area. Uh, right now, uh, Dan Fagley probably would have been here, he probably would be sitting in this spot, but they have an election going on right now, and, and the people that are opposed to all these initiatives that have passed, and I, I've lost track how many there are. Uh, Dan, was, right? yeah, Dan was supposed to get back to me and give me a list before I left, and he didn't. So there's seven or eight petitions they they passed, and in order to get out of that, the people that support Metro and with Metro's plans have decided to do, and they put it on the ballot. They got their signatures, got it on the ballot, and they want to disincorporate the area mm -hmm. and and take the city back to where it was. And and when they do that, it's going to wipe out all the initiatives that were passed, mm -hmm. and probably pretty much leave the the power in the hands of Metro and maybe the county government. And if it is in the county government, they they may be okay because. During this fight, uh, uh, another friend of mine, Steve Shop, he's working the phones and calling people, and he's doing all this stuff in the background and and, and, and talking people into doing all sorts of different things. And now we, we have a three-member Clackamas County board. No, wait, no, I'm sorry, we've got five members. We've got five member, but we now have the chairs on our side, and, and, and we have another strong person on our side, and then we have the guy in the middle. Oh, I almost put the wrong finger up there. We have the guy in the middle. That, that could go either way, even though he was supposed to be on our side, and we're not quite sure where he is. But 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 the Clackamas County board has been turned over, and, and, and before that, it was all light rail supporters, all supporting Metro's mandates and zoning changes, and and the people are becoming upset. 
and, and, and changing that. They, they've changed the leadership over in Lake Oswego. I don't know how many people they had over there. They had two or three that, that were elected over in Lake Oswego, which is across the river. And, and, and I think in Wilsonville, they, they've elected a couple of officials. But this is all from grassroots. This is all from just people that probably were never going to get involved in politics that don't like what Metro is doing to them. And, and for the most part, what you're going to find in the Portland and the Metro areas is people tend to like high density. They think it's a great idea. They, they, they think transit's wonderful and, and, and all the other things that, that Metro's pushing until it's in their backyard, next door to them, their neighborhood. And all of a sudden, uh, you're looking at a, a you know one of these buildings that they're showing, and that's in your backyard. I mean, some of the houses that John was showing in the photos, uh, I know a lot of people that lived in the Gateway area because that's where I live. I live in the Gateway area. It was a nice area, and, and a lot of the homes had, had acre lots, half acre lots, and that was common in that area. It, it was an auto-oriented area until Metro came in and the city planners, and they told us we were, we we're going to live like some of the photos you've seen now. Uh, and, but, but the problem is, is Metro's dreams and Portland's dreams and the planner's <coughs> dreams aren't always what the property owners or, or, or you know, had a dream for their property. Um, the one thing that the uh, Clackamas County commissioners have done, they, they did put a, they put they put out some measures to try to stop the light rail from coming into into Milwaukee. The problem is it's too little, too late. It's half built, and it, it's coming in. It's 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 streaming in. Some of those pictures that John showed, that's what's going all the way all the way out to uh, Milwaukee right now. Um, it's uh, the. The problem is, like like someone said earlier, it's too little, too late when the people try to try to figure out, finally figure out what's going on in your neighborhood. In the Gateway area, uh, when they were rezoning my neighborhood, they called it the Outer Southeast Plan. The problem is, some of the photos they showed there was on on Burnside. Burnside is a, is the east west uh, dividing of, of of where you are. So they called it the Outer Southeast Plan. Most of Northeast was rezoned in the Outer South Southeast Plan. So the people in Northeast didn't even go, they didn't even look, they didn't even care. They had no idea it was happening to them. Uh, a lot of people have uh, found out their property was rezoned and had no idea it happened. Uh, uh, Randall told a story a few years ago out in the Gresham area where they rezoned property and, and if your house burned down you had to build apartments. You couldn't rebuild your home. And then once the, uh, uh, the banks found out, it, 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 you, you can't insure a house if it, bur if it burns down and you can't insure it. I, mean, it, it, you know, I think they fixed some of those problems, but but the, you have these planners, they have this great plan, and they look at your property as their blank slate, and then before you know it, uh, it's happened to you. And, and Damascus was a, a nice area. The Clackamas County was a very nice area. It was an area that, that I, I was always told my wife I want to move out there. It'd be a great place to be. And, and right next to Damascus, they have another area called Happy Valley. I call it Unhappy Valley, uh, Valley now because it's just overrun with homes and houses it used to be a rural area but but once they once the, once they change the zoning they come in and they do it most people's dreams disappear uh in uh in, in my uh neighborhood most people have either passed away or moved away because uh they leapfrog up somewhere else because uh it's not you know uh the planners may get what they want but the people that live there have to move to go find what they had